So Nigeria gained her independence in 1960, where the British ruled through force of superior power and masterful cunning, subjugating the nations into parting with her resources. As a matter of fact, these colonial masters frittered away these resources, leaving Nigeria with crumbs. And indeed, it was an uneven relationship dominated by these British. So independence needed to come ASAP so that we could decide for ourselves and make laws and elect our own people who would truly represent us and decide our economic, political, and cultural fortunes so as to create that egalitarian society where Nigerians will feel or have a sense of belonging and also have a sense of being part of the Nigerian project so it was indeed a very fantastic reason why most Nigerians were waiting with bated breath for independence to come. Today's topic is Nigeria at 62, a country bound in disunity. Yes, you heard me, a country bound in disunity where leaders cannot even sing the national anthem nor recite the national pledge. Come our choice, Nigeria's call obey to serve our fatherland with love and strength and faith. The rules of our heroes past shall never be in vain. With us, we start our mind to serve the God in freedom, peace and unity. My pledge to my country. Yeah, I pledge to Nigeria to perform the best. No, what? I, oh. I, I pledge to Nigeria, my country, to be faithful, loyal, and honest, to serve Nigeria all my strength, and to defend our union and unity and integrity. And to, to defend her unity and uphold her honor and glory. So help me. A sad disconnect from the letters of this national ethos, a country that is supposed to be a country bound in freedom, peace, and unity, that is being embroiled with all kinds of security challenges that have defiled all solutions and with no end in sight. Where is that great lofty height attained? Where is the peace and justice and where is the pledge to be faithful, loyal, and honest? And the promise by these so-called leaders who have been caught, pants down, with their hands in the cookie jar, with all kinds of administrative malfeasance who have frittered away a common patrimony. 
with their international collaborators. Welcome to my channel, Shani's Digest. I welcome on board my new subscribers where I continue to appreciate my returning subscribers. This is a channel where we get to speak up and say it as it is. So happy independence, people. Happy um, 62nd independence. And let's hope that uh, we're definitely going to get it right someday and hope that that someday is not so far away from today. Of course, we have an opportunity to do that come 2023 presidential election. And that's why we, ha we all have to be very sensitized. I know that um, the leader that would really take us out out of the wood lead us to our held the route it's what we're going to elect come 2023 now coming to um, the celebration or i mean uh, uh celebration of the 62nd um, anniversary of uh, our independence so now every year we gather at, Igu at the eagle square and the various um, state stadia um, celebrating or marking uh, independence and more, more like a ritual with all the pledges and rhetorics to you know to make nigerian great to do this to do that so have we really learned anything from this year year on year celebrations that's the question i'm really is it just like um uh, a more of a ritual you just have to come in you you, you give all the fancy speeches and then all the pledges to do this to do that and soon after the uh, the celebration everything is forgotten so where can we really really go from here so that's what we're going to be looking at you know just briefly this this um video is going to be very 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 short video because um isn't it we're in the spirit of celebration of course no matter what is happening we just have to celebrate it because i just have to finish this and then you know jump into the next uh, uh celebration train right now so that's what's going to happen so it is at this point I'm going to echo the popular phrase that you better be careful what you wish for. We wanted independence. We we did. We tried to get independence, and then we got independence, and now we don't know, know what to do with the independence because just like uh, they say that we didn't fight for the independence, we we uh, we didn't quite weren't quite prepared for the independence, and independence was just handed over to us. <laughs> On the plate, like the head of John the Baptist, I think this was actually said by one, by the, the famous novelist in Nigeria and the late uh, Professor Chinua Achede, who said that uh, <laughs> independence was just handed over to us on a plate, on the plate, like the head of John the Baptist, and that we're not really prepared for it because, come to think of it, since um, we gained independence, the country has been employed in all kinds of Christ from one crisis to another, from one coup to counter coup, civil war, uh, now insecurity. In fact, it's just it's been it's been a sad story. It's been a sad story. Where I'm not going to say that we've not really had uh, a very uh, at a moment where we we are proud to be Nigerians. Of course, we've had those moments, especially when Nigerian players go out to play and then they make us proud. And then when individual Nigerians go out to the to the US to other countries of the world and make us proud, of course we've had those uh, uh, monumental uh, moments uh, where we get to really um, appreciate the fact that we are we are really really Nigerian. But beyond that, within uh, our own country, it's not really be, it's been a sad story or almost all true. I mean, I have to be very honest with you. We haven't really. Um, woken up to that country there where we'll be so proud of it has always been maybe very bad statistics is that we're being called in a shithole country we've been labeled in what headquarter of poverty uh poverty rate is uh, is either is going all high to 90 something percent and it's been it's been like that so that's why i say sometimes be, be just be careful what you wish for. We wanted independence, and now we got independence, and now we don't even know what to do with the independence. It's been a sad story all through. And then the so-called leaders don't even believe in the Nigerian project. They don't even have that patriotism, that patriotism in them. 
Some of them cannot, just like I said earlier, they cannot even recite or even, they can't recite the national pledge. They can't even sing the national anthem. And then it tells you that they even, they don't even believe in the, in the letters of this national ethos as enshrined in, in, in this national anthem and the pledge. How can we even build um, a country where there, I mean, these things are supposed to be symbol of commitment to the Nigerian project to show you that we are really, really patriotic. I mean, I've seen other African, I have not, 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 not necessarily African countries, even all over the world. I've seen when, when you see them, when they sing their national anthem, you see the patriotism in them, you see the commitment, you see the belief in them. But it's, it's really a sad thing that people don't even take these things out because you have to believe in your Nigerian project to be able to project it. Because if you don't, how are you going to drive that project so that the country becomes better? I mean, this celebration, uh, independent celebration this year, in fact, for so many years, it's been, it has always been sober reflection, sober reflection, sober reflection. So when are we ever going to move away from sober reflection and have a real celebration where we can say, yes, I am, where we can say that, yes, I'm a true Nigerian, I'm proud to be a Nigerian. And then when would that ever be? I keep hearing sober reflection, sober reflection. What, why do we keep sober reflecting all the time? That is the problem. Is it that there is never a, I mean, milestone wins that can make Nigerians, you, you're, you're celebrating your independence. They make you proud to be, yes, I'm a, I'm a Nigerian. I'm happy to be a Nigerian. And you celebrate all this sober reflection, sober reflection all the time. Why are we always sober reflecting? Can't we, in a way, have a real celebration as Nigerians? Because they say just before the stroke of midnight, they switch off the lights and lower the British Union Jack. And by midnight, they switch on the lights. And everybody's amazement. They stood the green, white, green. Like an Iroko tree, it was something lovely, lovely to see. But then, like I said, were we truly, really ready for independence? Were we truly, truly ready for independence? Because in the speech by the um, Prime Minister, Tafawa Balewa, he was still paying allegiance to the Queen and praying that may the Queen be safe. So, and then even um, the, uh, the Governor General, which um, Dr. Namdi Azikwe, kept reporting to the Queen, we were not ready for the independence because independence was just handed over to us on a plate like the head of John the Baptist. And that's why we didn't even know what to do with it when it came. And which, we, of course, will explain all the crises that engulfed the country shortly after independence. Because seven years after independence, we went into um, the Nigerian Civil War. And I'm not even talking about all the coups that... So it tells you that the place was just in chaos. Everything was just in chaos, telling that we're not really prepared to have that independence that we had. And maybe that's really, that's really why we, we, we remain so fragmented as, as a people. Why with that core, that core that should, you know, knit us together as a nation is broken. It's not there. And then we're just struggling, struggling to ensure that there's that good haste. Because when people say, uh, our strength lies in diversity, for goodness sake, if your strength lies in diversity, people are feeling marginalized, people are feeling that they are being neglected, they don't take care of them, they, 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 they don't have that sense of belonging in their own country. And you're saying our strength is in, is in our own diversity. Our diversity, many believe that the leadership of this country at all levels hasn't really done enough to, you know, tie the knots of this diversity together and make it more cohesive. That's the belief by many people. I mean, in a country where we have about, I think it's 520 languages spoken, 
250 ethnic groups. Some even some estimates even put the number as even over 400, and then 371 tribes. Of course, it tells you that Nigeria needs a leader that can you know tie these knots of polarized or diversity together and make it more cohesive because it is not just enough to say that high diversity is up our strength lies in our diversity it's not just enough because the people are already feeling disjointed they're feeling marginalized they feel that they, they, they are not part of the nigerian project so it is not just enough that's why we need a leader who is a, apart from being a great leader apart from being a visionary leader it has to also be a unifier that can come in and unify everybody and you know uh, tie the knots of this diversity and make it more cohesive so we just really need that so that people can feel can have this feeling that they are part of the nigerian project and that you'll be proud to be nigerians because most agitations that we are experiencing is actually born out of this very and um, feeling that um, um, they are not part of Nigerian, the Nigerian project. Nigerian the, the leaders are not carrying them along and stuff like that. And this is what independence was actually supposed to, you know, um, offer. Independence is supposed to, um, you know, foster this unity. But instead, <laughs> having the independence became a, an integrate disintegrating factor in uh, in a polity in our economy in our everyday life so why then did we even have independence so that's a question many people will ask so but you have that time now you have i mean you have a second chance to electing that leader that has been so elusive to us that unifier that's a great leader that has that visionary leader that can you know um, tie the, the knots of this diversity and make it more cohesive and then um, provide things, provide what the basic things an ordinary, ordinary Nigerian needs and then uh, who can also take us out of our economic woes and then usher us into our own El Dorado. So that's the leader we are, we are really looking for and we hope that that leader is actually going to um, come this 2023 and that's why I will, I will leave you with this, um, you know, I usually would leave you with the word of Aristotle that it is only a beast or a non-human that would not be interested in politics because you can see when you stay on the fence, you stay um, dis become disinter disinterested in what is going on, how, uh, how you elect your leaders, you stay aloof, you say it's, not, it's none of your business. At the end of the day, it, it comes back to you. So it is time. Because that's what Aristotle just said that it is a non-human. It's either you're a beast or a non-human that you will not, you know, take part or be interested in who governs you, who becomes your representative. So the time is now. So get ready and get the right leader that will take us to our own El Dorado. Thank you for having the time to watch my video. If you like the content of this video, please give us a thumbs up. <laughs> strike on that notification bell so that you get to be notified whenever i upload a video like this leave your comment down below and do not forget to subscribe to this channel happy independence people happy 62nd anniversary for nigeria and let the future be bright for us peace out